Hello. Good day, everyone. This is Trey with George FX. So today we're going to learn charting analysis. We're going to learn how to navigate through the charts and how to trade price action. So I would like you to follow through and get all the major keys I'm going to share with you shortly. So first of all, price action is a technique where price is the best indicator. So there are a lot of indicators out there for you to use and trade, but price action makes it easy and simple for you so that you don't get confused. So little or no indicator is needed. So either you're using one or two indicators just to have further confirmations or you are not using any indicator at, at all. So many areas of confirmations do price action provide for you so that you can have safe trading so price action also give you best entry points with tight stop loss so this is something that is very paramount to why trading forex you don't just need good entry points but you need the best entry points and you need to expose a minimum amount of your money to the market so this technique also gives you a high risk reward ratio so in every trade you want to take you should be able to know how much are you risking to how much do you want to earn so this technique is good for swing trading not for scalping just get in mind and know that it is you have to be a good swing trader before being a good scalper so price action is not affected by fundamentals or news so once you have a clear setup you have a percentage that you want to risk to your reward you can go in for the trade once the price hits your stop loss is invalidated at the areas of your profit level you can take profit at any point so now there are major tools that we use so i'm not teaching you general price action i'm teaching you the exact skill technique that you need to make money so the first one is you must know how to identify your zones your support resistance levels or the zones which i personally refer to them as key levels so the second one is the japanese candlestick patterns so we are focused on the exhaustive candles the third one is the trend line and channels the fourth are the chart patterns and the last is the fibonacci so this is our rule why trading with the support and resistance level so the first how do i get it first of all mark levels using only daily weekly and monthly time frame do not use any other time frame strength of key levels follow this progression the daily is weaker than the weekly and is weaker than the monthly so at any time frame at these three time frames that you're able to identify these levels the levels that you identified on the monthly time frame are strong levels compared to the levels that you identify at the weekly and daily remember that at resistance you sell and at support you buy so mark up these levels with different colors you can decide to mark up your monthly with red daily with blue and uh, monthly with any other color of your choice now focus on the candles open close low and high why drawing so quickly i'm going to show you how to do this with your chart so now we are on the chart so i'm going to use the euro usd i'm setting up the chart quickly taking away the grid and um, i like using the black on white the candlesticks and um, so i'm going to zoom to see it clearly okay so here is the monthly chart added a little zoom so at this point i'm going to get this is the horizontal line is used for 
identifying key levels. So this is on the monthly chart. I'm getting key levels. So if you look at this key level I just dropped, you can see that it is interacting with the open, the close here, the open, the close here is interacting with the high. So, and remember, if you have at most three, two or three, it's giving you the confirmation that you need. So, if you have three, if you have three, four, five, six, seven, perfect. So, minimum is three. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. These ones are not really clear. So, and remember that um, the ones that give you the confirmation has to be around the current price. So I'm going to identify one more other one from the top. Try to shift it. So I think I have something here, here, here. I think I have here. So I think I'm okay with this. So this is the weekly. So at this point, I'm dealing with this price range you see there's a cluster here there's a curl cluster here there's is not a clear interaction so that is simply telling me there's a zone you see so because there's a cluster there's a zone there so i'm using the rectangle shape to get the zone this is daily you see it's a zone so so in mind the way you draw zones are at lower time frames. So there's a cluster of price there. So that's a zone. You see, it's a level and it's a zone. So you should be very clear identifying them. So here is um the daily time frame. Trying to um get a level here one two three one two three one two three so daily i can decide to label red is weaker is weaker so this is monthly for me no weekly but i'm not going to draw excessive lines on my chart so this is how to identify your weekly these are how to identify your levels and your zone okay so let's go back so next one is your japanese candlesticks pattern we are focused on exhaustive candles so we have the doji family pimba family tweezer bottom and top so the rules why trading these candles is that you have to identify them on the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. Secondly, ensure that the candles are properly represented. Ensure you can identify these candles on the chart. Ensure they appear at zones, levels that give further confirmations. I've shown you those zones. So if you see the candle appearing at such zones, it gives you further confirmation. So this is these are the doji family members. We have the long-legged doji, the dragonfly, gravestone doji. The three of them. The fourth one is not part of our focus. So the dragonfly is a signal to buy massively. The gravestone is a signal to sell massively. The long-legged doji is a sign of indecision, but it tells you that the preceding trend is getting exhausted so try to know the preceding trend so the dragonfly and gravestone are reversals so if the preceding trend is selling it's going to take the buy and buy basal so th these are the pin bar family so at any point you hear pin bar these are the candles that are referred to these four candles are all at once called pin bar so it can be, it could be a hammer, hanging man, inverted hammer, shooting star, hanging man, and hammer look alike, but they appear at different positions. Same to inverted hammer and shooting star. So these are the position. The hammer is found after a downtrend, so it's a reversal candle. So we are targeting. 
So the next, the inverted hammer and the shooting star. So you can see that the inverted hammer looks exactly like the shooting star, but it's it is after a preceding downtrend. So at the low here, we are assuming that you are having a support zone, a demand zone, a support level, a support line. So it better confirms that the price was unable to close below, but it closed above the support level here. So this is shooting star at the top. So further confirmations will come by having a zone here, a resistance zone, a support level, a support line, as the case may be. Then tweezer buttons on top. So look very closely at them. You can see that they have the same shape. They have the same length of wicks. They are just the same. So the first one has um, the first one has um, the same sentiment as the preceding trend. In the tweezer bottom, we are having a downtrend here, and then we are having a tweezer. We are having a sell candle. And this one takes the role of the reversal that we expect. Same is happening here, buy, buy, and sell. So watch out for these at the lower time frame. So the next is trend lines. So trend lines is used to monitor price breakout. So you must know how to utilize the trend line. So once you have two points, you can use it to connect the third one sounds as, as a confirmation. So let's go straight to the charts. Let me show you how you can actually use the trend line. So let's say for instance, here, um, is a lower time frame. So we can have a trend line here, this is a trend line. We're having this trend line on the week. On the week, we're having one, two, and three. Four is okay. So the psychology here is price. Once price returns to this trend line, it bounces up. Once it returns, it bounces up. So if price can break, this point is coming down here. So if it breaks, closes below here today, we're going to sell down to this place and take our profits. So until price corrects and breaks down, price corrects and closes below, we're going to go for a massive downside. So this is the trend line. So now the next are uh, your channels. Now, channels are not just a single trend line. But these are parallel lines so you're not going to draw them one after the other you will use the equidistant channel to draw it so it helps you to trade price ranges in different directions so you can see this is an up channel this is a down channel and this is a sideways channel so price generally here is going up so but at the bottom here these are opportunities to buy and at the top here is opportunities to sell you can see it bounces up and it takes that move sideways opportunities to sell opportunities to buy so going back to the chart we can get it done let's say this is a um, daily time frame using the equidistant channel so i'm going to ensure i catch um, this point I think I have one I have two three I think I'm okay for I'm okay with them so I highlight um, then take this this is where I looked out to draw so I take this second one to the bottom so I'm using this to, to ensure I have something that has a four distance so here i think i'm dealing with this um open 
I'm dealing with this open. I'm cutting out the wicks here. I'm dealing with this a low, low. I'm cutting out the wick. So that's a channel. You see, price takes here, buys here. And that, this is the breakout from the channel. So it was an opportunity to buy the breakout to the upside because it's a descending channel. So it's breaking to the opposite side. So this over 100 pips, or you can target um, still 100 pips. All right. So I already have um, an old chart on Euro USD. You can see it here. Been trading it. So I took this breakout, and this is a zone. This is a support zone. So these are things you need to watch out for. So on the daily, this is a, this is a pin bar, a hammer that touched a support. At the same time, it closes above a zone. This this um this is an aqua color. It's a zone. So you can see the buys. So it took to a buy the next day. And days after so that is what you equally need to watch out for now the next are chart patterns so we have a whole lot of chart patterns I listed them here you can take out time to take a good look at the list but I'm focused on the wedgie the wedges the pennant and the triangle so these are majorly these are the ones that give me the big move number one is the wedge, the wedges. So some of these patterns, they appear as reversal patterns or continuation patterns. Some can give opportunity for both sides. So we have the rising wedge, falling wedge, bullish pennant, bearish pennant. So these are the reversal patterns. You take a good look at them, study them, and um, try to identify them in the chart. They may not look so pretty good in the chart, but you should just develop identify them so for a rising wedge price is bullish the consolidation is also rising but you notice that the lows are making more highs higher lows but the higher highs are not going high anymore see they are kind of redundancy so because of this redundancy in price to move up there's a forceful move to the downside one well, stop loss entry and target falling wedge is the inverse price is down and it's taking time to go more down but the top is going steeper so price possibly bounces to the up side so now this is the continuation pattern price is up but the wedge is not going up now it's coming down coming down steepy here is down here is more steep and price possibly breaks to the upside come price is down coming up steep possibly continuing the same way we have the pennant goes so for pennant this and this are the same angle they are equidistant and they have the same angle they are not just any line so these two lines have the same angle so once you have such um scenario you take the direction of the preceding trend so this is a bullish trend it continues this is a bearish trend it continues so now we have the bilateral chart pattern so these ones are the triangles so the triangles actually give you any direction so you notice that here this is not a wedge this is a horizontal lane it's a resistance so you see price ascending and at this point it starts giving consolidations these are the highs but the lows are creating higher lows so price then to take a forceful break to the upside or take to the downside the inverse is here descending triangle this is a horizontal plane or the support so the price starts to consolidate and making um, lower highs so at this point price tends to break down or takes to the upside for the symmetrical triangle it takes either both sides so the symmetrical triangles are equal in distance they have the same angle just like the pennant but the pennant has a smaller shape the pennant is smaller than the symmetrical triangle so in our next video we're going to learn how to use the fibonacci tool to trade with those